I think it's interesting as you go to history. Yeah. To, to kind of resolve those, because I think one thing that I was taught is that this is the only way that Christians have really interpreted this stuff in the oh, past. Right, right. And oh, I think yeah. on the days, like one thing that oh, was yeah. really interesting is looking at how Augustine saw days. So. Yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. When, when Augustine and Origen, two of the foremost uh, church fathers, uh, I have a wonderful quote from Origen that I might pull out later, but he really can't understand why anyone would read Genesis 1 literally. And he says, as I would say, how can you have a literal day with a literal evening and morning when you don't even have a sun, moon, and stars till the fourth day? You know, so, so it, 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 it's kind of, there's where the text is kind of saying to us, don't take these days literally. And then, of course, it's also interesting to see the magnificent and, and just to be clear, though, like, yeah. Origen was a long time ago, right? Yeah, yeah, Origen. He was before Darwin, right? Yeah, he was <laughs> hundreds of years. Augustine was uh, 400 AD, and I'm afraid to say when Origen is exactly, because another person in the back is my colleague in church history, Ellen <laughs> Ree. But uh, he was even a little bit earlier than Augustine. So, um, so... The days, just one more comment about the days, you have an interesting parallelism between the first three days and the second three days. The first three days involves the creation of realms that are then filled by the inhabitants of those realms in the second three days, so that the realm of light and darkness on day one is filled by the sun, moon, and stars that inhabit those realms on day two, the, uh, the, the sky and the sea are separated. And on day five, the birds and the fish are created. And then on day three, the land is created by pushing back the seas and vegetation comes forth. And on day six, the land animals are created and human beings are created. So again, I would suggest that that is an indication that we're not learning the actual sequence of creation. We're getting a beautiful literary description of the creation to tell us that it was Yahweh and no other God that created creation. Because we should read Genesis 1 and 2 not as if it's rivaling Darwin, not that it doesn't have implications perhaps for it, but it is written as rivaling Babylonian, Egyptian, and other creation uh, texts. For more information about the Veritas Forum, including additional recordings and a calendar of upcoming events, please visit our website at veritas.org.